Thank you. <laughs> you should have sound now. Sorry about that. Mike needs Mike. You should be able to hear me now. No? No, you shouldn't. What's happening here? Test, test, test. Okay, yeah. Sorry. No sound? Sound? Sound yes? Sound no? <laughs> Why do we always have to have technical issues? <laughs> I have too much stuff over here. I should just take a picture so you guys can see my setup. It's terrible. It's terrible. Mike has a mic. Watching from the Philippines? That's awesome. I'm half Filipino. Everybody can hear me now. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, yeah, I don't know how many of you are actually in the class, but I did a little drawing, a little drawing yesterday. I haven't drawn anything in a while, just to kind of like show a couple of more ways that you can use the technique. Nothing drastically different, but just like you can have a lot of fun with colored pencils. Um, I was just saying before I screwed up my audio that um, this is usually about as small as I like to go, which is like four inches by four inches or something like that. It's really hard to go much smaller than that, especially with, um, with colored pencils, I find, just because you can't keep them real sharp for very long. Uh, even if they're, after just like a little bit of using them, they kind of dull down just enough so that they're not, not very usable. Wow, look at all these people. Look at all these wonderful people. I hope everyone's having a good Sunday so far. Um, I think before I started, I was saying I don't know what I'm going to do today other than draw our muse. So if you have questions along the way, I am more than happy to try to answer them, even if it means um, getting sidetracked from the drawing. I want to make sure that uh, if there's anything that's unclear um, or you want me to go deeper into, I can talk about that stuff. So think about your questions. Hey, Shannon. Hey, Cindy. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to give it a couple more minutes, let people kind of come in. Hey, Martha. Hey, Katarina. Switzerland. Wow. Um, as usual, I'm going to have some basic stuff uh, material-wise. I'm going to have my colored pencils. That's not very bright, is it? Mm -mm -mm. Colored pencils. I'm just picking a couple of colors. Peacock green. Process red, so a little bit of a complementary color scheme today, I think. Ears. Well, there's no ears in this muse, I'm sorry. Ears would be fun, though. I could probably do a little, like, uh, a little side drawing of ears. I mean, really what it is is just a bunch of curly stuff. You were in the, uh, the Loomis class. It's just a mess in those ears, so... Uh, all the tubes in the ears are so small it gets muddled. Yeah, it's it's pretty difficult to to I think use the technique in those kinds of areas. Um, the only the only way to make it easier is to go bigger for sure. But yeah, ears can get a little a little muddled definitely. But maybe I could do like a little five minute uh, something. I'm trying to I'm looking around right now to see if I have any reference photos uh, sitting around, but I don't think I do. So I could always record something and post it to the to this class. Anish, you said you need to ask me something? Noses. Well, we will be doing a nose today, Dean, so I think we can do that one. To get started here in just a minute. Is it better to draw from the top or the bottom? That's a really good question. I mean, I think you can draw from either direction. Um, one thing I was going to do with this drawing today was um, I was actually not going to do any 
any uh, any scaffolding for a lay-in or anything like that. I was just going to start drawing, um, which is not something I normally do. In the April 30 Faces, 30 Days uh, Sketchy Challenge, um, which you can buy on shop.sketchy.com, I, I did a thing which was all about constraints, and I did a no measuring um, uh, class, lesson, I don't even know what you want to call it, and it was it's a lot of fun. So I'm thinking I might do that again today where I just start drawing from some area of the face and use, use these contours to really help create the volume as we go. I think that could be a little bit of fun unless anybody wants me to, it also gets me into the drawing a lot faster. So like last week we didn't get too far into the face. So I'd rather, I think get a little further into the face than, um, than spend too much time on construction. It's a beautiful day in Denver. That's awesome. Is the sketchy class free? No, it's not. It's uh, it's available for thirty U.S. dollars um, at school.sketchy.com. Um, it's lots of really great classes on there, but this is a a little teaser, I would say, of what what you get. Sorry if I'm a little bit blown out. I don't have a lot of light happening outside, so I've just got all my studio lights going on here. What colors am I using today? Let's go ahead and just swap over. Um, so I'm using peacock green, which is like a kind of a greenish blue. And I'm using process red, which is kind of a pinkish red. So they're sort of complementary colors um, by name. So I thought I thought it might be okay to try them out. I was doing some. Um, I always do like little little tests. I do little tests before we get going. I just try different color combinations. I was thinking about using this purple. Well, just violet, I guess. It's nice, but it's just about, it's almost as dark as the peacock green. So I thought we, we'd just go with, with process red and peacock green, which is right here. Polly says, Polly bought some, I saw this, I saw your drawing by the way, it looked great. Um, he bought 87 cent Crayola colored pencils uh, in the back to school bin, was happy to use some of these exercises. I think that's the interesting thing is you can use whatever you want. You don't have to use like a really high quality colored pencil. My big thing is just having a, a really hard, hard lead because it makes it easier, but you can use whatever you want. I think that's what's great about um, all of these lessons that we're doing. Uh, how's the situation in Portland today? It's a little bit better today, but the air quality is still pretty darn bad. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm going to zoom out a little bit here, and we're just going to get going with this. Okay. Uh, like I said before, I'm probably just going to kind of start drawing and we'll see how it goes. This will hopefully be somewhat fun. What's the best pencils to buy? Valerie, um, I like these Prismacolor Very Thins, but you don't have to buy um, any kind of color pencil. Really, it's it's mostly about what you like to use. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna start with the nose. We'll see what happens. Uh, and I'm going to be using contours in this case to really think about the the forms of the nose. Might zoom in a little bit, a lot, a little lot, since we're just going to be meandering around. Okay. But yeah, I'm just kind of starting with the ball of the nose here. And I'm going to likely uh, just kind of build out the forms a little bit as we go around because I want to give myself some sorts of anchors to build off of. But this is not going to be an accurate drawing by any means.
you've only got soft leads, but it works when you sharpen every 30 seconds. Yeah, I mean, I, to be honest, like even with these pencils, I sharpen like every, uh, I don't even know how often, every minute or two. Doesn't take long, especially when you're pressing really hard. That little drawing I did yesterday was like, um, just a lot of pressure. I was sharpening quite a bit. It's really difficult to get Prismacolor Very Thins in the UK. Most pencils I can find are soft. I'm not sure what other brands are hardcore versions. Um, the Faber-Castell, uh, they've got a basic color pencil set. Um, we got those sent to us during the sketchy uh, 30 Faces 30 Days Challenge in April. They sponsored, and it was... Um, their pencils are like right in between. I did a, I did a drawing with those pencils. Um, so those are pretty good. Really, it's only, I would say it's only the, um, the Prismacolor, the other Prismacolor ones, which are like, uh, what do you call it? They're, they're the really soft, waxy ones. Those are the ones that are um, a little less conducive to this. You can do it, it's just they're, they're going to be really, need a lot of sharpening. Yeah, an issues is them. Um, okay, so we're just going to keep kind of going around here, starting with this process red, because I want to layer, um, do some layering. So just kind of like thinking about how the nose starts to turn. I think you can already see how the contour hatching is like really already kind of creating a volume. Um, I'm just going to reinforce with some lines here and there. Okay, so let's, let's just scooch up the bridge of the nose. It's a little bit of an awkward angle for me. Not sure if Jordan from Sketchy is listening, but I don't know if there's any sales right now happening on the classes. I will say this though, Inktober is coming up and I'm like, I've been probably doing too much between work and these classes, but uh, I think I might actually try the Inktober. I just did the, um, I recorded the watercolor lesson for, that's coming out today. I recorded it last week and um, it's, it's one that uses ink and watercolor. I think you'll will like it a lot. It's a pretty long lesson, but it's just because um, I talk a lot about watercolor and I talk a lot about ink, but hopefully it'll be pretty helpful. Anyway, um, but yeah, Inktober. Uh, it's, I forget how much fun ink is. It's just like, it's so much fun. So they do have, Sketchy does have an Inktober class happening, or challenge, I should say. And uh, I think it'll be a lot of fun. Some really great artists, uh, featured artists. Oh, wow, there we go. Buy any of my classes and get 40% off of other classes uh, with the discount code heads up sketchy. Um, that's a pretty good deal. It's a pretty good deal. Thanks for posting that. Yeah, so Inktober is happening. Maybe, maybe do that with one of my other classes. If you're not already signed up for this one, maybe you do it with this one. Um, a lot of people are doing, I just want to say, by the way, anybody that is in the class, I know I haven't been super vocal just this week, but um, y'all's drawings are looking fantastic. I'm uh, really, really excited to see the folks that have been doing, um, doing drawing, like doing the colored pencil ones with different colors. I think that those are really exciting, uh, just using different color schemes. Um, what I think I like about colored pencils, I mean, to be frank, you can do this with any medium, but like, I, I feel like as long as you have a lighter color and a darker color, you can kind of make any, any, um, any color scheme work. So yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, I just, I'm really inspired by you guys. It's, uh, it's really cool seeing what you're making. 
Okay, so I'm just kind of trying to figure out my way around the glasses here awkwardly. Um, I can kind of see where her eye, bring this down a little bit, where the kind of the glabella starts to turn around. And we see it on the other side as well. So this is where we start getting into the brow ridge. And I'm going to kind of go like this to show that surface. So with, with these, um, these glasses, I'm not going to do contour hatching, really, because they're a flat surface, right? So they don't have any dimensional form. They're just like a flat, um, just a flat thing. So we're going to treat them like that by using just regular old hatching, but we are still going to pay attention to their, um, their planes. We'll see how these glasses wind up. I, can, I think they're already going to be a pretty skewed, pretty weird, which is fine. I feel like after the Loomis class where I was trying to draw so as accurately and as proportionately as I could, now I just want to break away from that completely. It's not that it's bad to draw like that. It's just I, um, I just realized that after making these classes that it kind of put me into this like really formal way of thinking about art and I was hoping I just personally I was like hoping to kind of move away from that I think or I was starting to move away from that in my own work so anyway <laughs> that's just me blabbering I'm not I, I I think it's only in the last like couple of years that I've really started embracing the idea of mistakes when making artwork and uh, and just kind of having to work through it. It's fun. So just kind of going around here, thinking about where we would see the insides of some of these planes of the glasses. Um, just want to get these in here so that we know kind of where a lot of these features are going to sit. So these are actually becoming like my um the thing that that helps me orient myself so now i can start kind of going in and uh thinking about this area under the brow and i'm not going to go too dark here because i can see that it's um it's pretty light okay so i already can tell i made these glasses a little too big that's totally fine and i think about where her eye is it's probably somewhere somewhere around in here. Okay, and I know that there's a lid there, so I'm gonna start to draw it. You can see the underside of the lid here. I hope y'all are drawing along with me. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and draw the inside of the eye. I'm just going to lightly put this in here. Going to have to make some stuff up here, I think. And shrink this down a little bit. So we do know that we have like an eyelid, so I can see the top plane of the bottom eyelid here. And I don't know if you can see this, but there's a shadow kind of being cast from our glasses over the top of the part of the eyeball. So I'm going to start to kind of block that in. And then continue working into the iris. Can't see a whole lot in here. There's a little bit of a reflection in her eye just on the left side of that pupil, so I'm just going to stub that in as well. Okay, so we've got some cast shadows happening with the glasses that go like this and this, and then we've got some fun shapes happening in here. You can see that 
the skin is kind of folding up from how she's grinning. And we're getting this fun little kind of tube shape. When will the watercolor class? Uh, it's not a class. It's um, or it's a lesson from this contour hatching class. Um, that one's going up, I think, today. I think they've been posting them on the same day as these streams. So it should be going up probably a good couple hours after after this live stream. And I want to warn you, I am not good at watercolor. So um, it is less about the watercolor and more about the ink portion of it, I would say. OK, we're getting a little messy in here. So I'm just going to make some lines to kind of reinforce where some of these edges are just so I can see them when I go back and add in the, uh, the green. Yeah, Don, I, that's exactly the sentiment, totally. Yeah, I love the Loomis method also, um, but <laughs> I feel like, I mean, unless you're in like an atelier or something like that, uh, it, it's, it's pretty rigorous to, to constantly try to be drawing at that, like with that level of precision and observation. Sometimes you just need to break away. So this area is going to be, I want this to be dark, so I'm going to go over it a few times with some more lines. And I think one thing I want to say here is that some people have been, you know, wondering, like, how do you get darker values in some of these shadowy, shadowy areas without it getting muddy? And I've talked about a couple of ways of doing it. One is, like, just not being afraid to go in with more line. Um, as long as your pencil is sharp, you should be able to still make out these distinct lines. And then the other way is just starting to get into some cross contour hatching, where you're literally crossing back over your lines from a different angle, but still thinking about the forms underneath. So you can see here that I'm darkening. And then when we go over with the other color, we'll still be able to see, um, we'll be able to see even more value range. So anyway, we'll get to that. I think we'll get far enough in this drawing. It's only 9, 9.20. Um, OK, so let's go ahead and get this other eye in here, just at least get it placed. I'm going to try to think about, I didn't do much of an angle here. It's a little weird because I drew her nose kind of straight on. And now I want to make sure her eyes are kind of going up at this angle like this. So I'm just going to try to imagine that there's a line coming over here and that, that the bottom, you can see that the bottom of that eye and this eye, that they kind of run parallel. This is one of the keys to making sure that your features feel like they're, it's like one of the first steps that you do in the Loomis method is make sure that you're, um, you're all, you, you have some major landmarks and one of the biggest uh, concerns that you should have at that moment, your time to sharpen the pencil, um, is that the, those landmarks are all running parallel and thus all your features are running parallel so that you don't have like your eyes drifting off upwards or anything like that. Kieran asks for the nose please, I find them very difficult to draw. Yeah, I think if, if you just got here you may have missed it, but um, just kind of put one in over here. I'll say this, if, you're, if you really want to know how to draw the nose, um, definitely take a look at the my drawing the human head class. We get into the nose, get into the structure of the nose and all the different planes of the nose, um, and then how, how the nose looks from, from different angles. So that might be helpful. I'm just starting to add some dimension here to these glasses. We're not going for perfect today, we're just going for fun, so. So, okay, um, let's see, we've got a bottom plane of the eye. And then we've got this fun 
eyelid happening here. And I'm just trying to see where it kind of starts to come back up. Do I use a special eraser for colored pencil? Yep. If, I, if I'm going to erase, I'll use one of these plastic erasers. It doesn't have to be um, Stetler, but they're like, uh, they're white and they're kind of springy. Uh, those tend to be really good for, for colored pencils if you're going to... Um, if you're gonna to need to erase, sometimes you do need to erase. Like I'm not gonna say you don't. So, uh, so yeah, I, I like those a lot. As long as you haven't gone too hard with them, you should be able to get some of the marks up. So you can see here, I'm just kind of looking at some of these smile lines and trying to make them bubble up a little bit, even over exaggerate them here. Great, Laney, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Best eraser is drawing on smooth, hard pressed paper. Yeah, this is, oh yeah, by the way, this uh, paper, Bristol board, that's what I'm using right now. So yeah, it's very smooth, very hard, very heavy paper. Um, I think it's best for, uh, it's the, probably the best kind of paper for colored pencils in my opinion. But you don't have to use it, it's just, it's just a really rigid support and it's very smooth. So it tends to be very good for this kind of drawing. So again, we're in a shadow area here, so I'm just going to go over with a few more extra lines. Even though it looks like it's kind of getting muddy, if you were to kind of come up close to it, you can see that it's, it's, it is made up of many different lines, um, which I think is like one of the most important qualities that you're looking for with contour hatching. Even though I'm just kind of putting lines on top of lines on top of lines, I'm just making sure to really use, still continue to use those contours. And I'm not just like scribbling. I'm not um, being haphazard with my lines because you can see them when you're looking up close. Hey, Wendy, glad you were able to make it. You put a hard wooden clipboard under your paper. Yeah, so do I. This thing right here, that's like, it's like a big masonite board. So you and I are in the same boat on that one. It's a really good extra support uh, for, your, for your drawing. So looking at this under part of her eye here, and I'm looking at what I did over here. So I think I'm gonna try to echo that. Um, over on this side, this is a kind of a meatier part of her face. And again, it's kind of bunching up because, because she's smiling or grinning. So we're going to see it there. And then we've got this like area underneath. Um, and it's also a darker value. So I'm actually going to try to come in and curve the other way. Go over it a couple of times. Because it's kind of going inward. It might look like it's, it might end up looking like it's going outward, but um, that's fine too. But I'm just trying to, trying to think about how that area of the eye is kind of going, going inward. So I'm creating a, a curve opposite the other curves above it. And you can use where your lines start and end to, to help emphasize and kind of create differentiation between these plane changes. I think y'all have probably seen me doing that quite a bit in some of these drawings. Okay, I'm going to think about the eyelashes really quick. So they sit on the lid. And you know what, I'm going to leave them at that and then we'll do those in the darker color once we get to them. Yeah, Dean. <laughs> yeah, paper with a slight tooth will definitely eat up your pe your pencils. Okay, so I'm gonna go up to the eyebrow, and my tip is always, always, always use the use the hairs, the direction of the hair of the eyebrow to help yourself create the right curves. 
And then we're going to go ahead and think about the area under the eyebrow and how it curves upward and outward. Something like that, maybe. Hmm. Again, I'm not measuring here any of this stuff, so features might tend to look a little bit weird as we go on. We'll see how it goes. And I'm going to go ahead and do some cross contour over here, just to add a little bit more, a little bit more roundness to this area of the eye. The direction of the line is what I can't seem to get when I try to do hatching. Yeah, um, I think this is something that just takes practice and observation. I know I keep saying that, but um, when when we're thinking about the line, we're actually thinking about we're thinking about the form. And what I mean by the form is so if we if we take a look at let's see if we can get something going here. I'm just going to kind of create the outline of her cheek a little bit. Um, so when I'm, when I'm looking at this part of the cheek, uh, I printed this out. When I'm looking at this part of the cheek, I will stop up real quick. When I am seeing, maybe I can just straight up draw on this. What I am seeing is I am seeing this form and I'm seeing it curve around. That makes sense. I'm also seeing it curve around in this direction. And like on this side, I'm seeing it kind of curve around this way. And as it kind of turns outward, face those curves face me. And I start to see it kind of go this way. So a lot of this is just like, it's knowing the forms. This might actually be a good exercise for y'all if you can print out something or if you've got like Procreate, is just to start kind of seeing how all of these different um, dimensions of the face really turn and move and where they start and where they stop. Like I said, I've said before in, in other areas, it's, it's almost like there's a grid over the face and you're kind of showing how that grid stretches and deforms over the face. So maybe that, that can see, I, I just intuitively kind of know this because, um, because I have a really, um, I don't want to say like, oh, I've got a really good uh, understanding of the human face, but I've, I've just worked so much with, with uh, the human face that I can see where it does all the different, different things that it does in terms of where it turns and where it kind of dips away from me and all of that kind of good stuff. So that's, that's really what's happening when I'm thinking about um, where to make, the, what direction to make the lines. But the, the thing about all of these curves and f like the form itself is that it's all like you can literally go in any direction because the form itself is is kind of protruding and so there's uh, it's not just a grid it's like I mean it is a grid but you can rotate the grid around uh, as long as your lines are just like if you're just really thinking about that um, that dimension of the form, as long as your lines kind of are wrapping around that and not just kind of going straight across, I think you'll start to see, you'll start to see that form. So you can see what I'm talking about here, I think. Yeah, it's very similar to carving. I would say that your lines are still too heavy handed. Beta, um, I wouldn't, 
I don't know. My my lines are pretty heavy handed. You'll I think this is something that I've learned over time is just this idea that um, I tend to start my lines heavier and then I let I let the pressure come up as I as the line kind of tapers off to the end. And that that is something that just kind of requires practice. Um, but I, I get pretty heavy uh, later in the drawing. So I think it's okay to be heavy handed, just depends on when you're doing it. So maybe just try to be a little bit lighter at the beginning. So I'm trying to get some sort of a smile happening here. This might end up looking really bad. I just want to call that out right away. Again, I'm trying to keep my features like kind of parallel with these glasses. So the bottom of the eyes hit about there. Bottom of the nose hits about there. So now when I come over here, I need to keep this corner of the mouth up a little bit higher. So that the corners kind of sit at the same place. So just something to, to help you. Looks like the corner of her mouth might come out a little bit more even. And just kind of going around around the face just to give myself a little bit of a light structure. Normally I would just um, create, create a, a rough lay-in so that I know where everything is supposed to go already, but we're not doing that today. So I'm just kind of drawing out from the nose. So <laughs> Polly says sometimes your brain is telling you one thing, but your hands are doing something else. That's okay. I, I, I appreciated one of your comments in the sketchy art school about like, there's like this moment where everything is not working, kind of falling apart. This is the sentiment, it's not a quote. Uh, and then suddenly you kind of, go into a state where you're, uh, you kind of forget what's going on, you kind of wake up all of a sudden, and there's this drawing in front of you. I think that that's one of the nice things about this technique. I'm just kind of meandering around the face right now and just kind of looking, looking for areas where I think things are protruding forward, like the chin. Yeah, I think um, I think that's one reason to let's go ahead and put this up. Um, I think that's one reason to to shoot for the harder pencils because I they the lines you know for this for this to work it's really that the lines need to be sharp um, and yeah I could see for sure if you're if you're working uh, with softer pencils that that it might not come off as clear unless you're pressing really hard. Because I definitely do not have to press hard with this, uh, with these pencils to get really sharp lines. Where are we at with time? 9.37, okay. I wanna get into some dark areas. So we might just, we might kind of stop and just kind of keep everything focused over here so I can show you some of the dark stuff. Even though in the lesson we did cover uh, and show some of that darkness, uh, like how to layer to get a darker value, I think it'll be fun just to, just to do it again. Let's go ahead and get the rest of this lip in first though so it doesn't look weird. And right now I'm, I'm using a relatively light amount of pressure because I do want to be able to, much like again in the lesson, I kind of went in with a first pass and then I came back out again and then started using another color which allowed me to go in darker with that original color and then it was just kind of this dance back and forth. Um, so yeah, 
this is usually what I'll do is is kind of do this because the thing about like any color of skin is that there's really no pure white areas of them or of the skin at all right so you you should feel pretty comfortable just kind of going in with a light touch and um, kind of tracing out a lot of these forms because like I said nothing is nothing is actually going to be pure white so it's okay to get value on everything the only place like right here there's a there's a bit of a specular highlight so you might take extra care just to not not put too much in that area this is a fun muse to to do this with by the way just because there's so many really um, kind of fatty forms because that's what we've got in our face this is getting a little bit muddy so okay so there's a good place to erase um, so I got my my eraser and I'm just gonna go as hard as I can into here and you can see it kind of takes up most of that and so I'm gonna go back again and I'm just gonna do it from a slightly different angle So it is possible to erase. I had gotten a little too caught up in talking, I think. So yeah, that looks better. Andy says you need to try the meandering approach again. Yeah, it's, I mean, this wasn't super meandering, but it's, it was, it's a pretty fun, way of doing things. Um, I, I'm trying to think of, I think I first accidentally kind of stumbled into doing that. I don't know, when I did like, there used to be these challenges called Nanodramo um, that started on Flickr. And there was like a spin off of National Novel Writing Month, which is in November, where you try to make, you try to write a novel in the course of a month. Um, and so, we we did a we did a thing that was called national well nano drama so national <laughs> it it doesn't make any sense it's <laughs> it's actually a bad name for it anyway um, so we did that and uh, it was a lot of fun and I actually just kind of stumbled one day into trying to draw something from just starting from nothing and started trying to draw a lot of these really insane kind of curves um, and that's when I first kind of stumbled upon contour hatching personally so the first thing I want to do we've got a fun moment here where we've got the glasses and we've got the skin and we haven't done anything with the glasses so I'm actually gonna this is um, I'm gonna use the planes of the glasses which are very flat and I'm gonna use one color to describe them so that they have a, the appearance appearance of a local color which basically means that if I were to not shine any light or shine a very even light on these glasses. Uh, in this case, they're sort of tortoise shell. So I, I would see that they were kind of a, in, the, in real life, like a kind of a black darkish gray color. And then her skin is not that color. So what we're doing when we don't put any pink or any process red into the glasses is we get a very distinct appearance that these two things are very much different colors so that can that's one cool thing about colored pencil is um, you can really easily separate and blend and overlay one another so that you get this very distinct separation of of materials or local color and I'm kind of just doing this really quickly mostly um, because I want to get into the shadows of the face. But you can see I'm using a single direction here. I'm going pretty sloppy, by the way. Uh, I wouldn't normally, or I don't know. It kind of adds some character to it. Just this contrast of like a really sloppy line quality for the glasses and not so sloppy for the face. Um, 
Anyway, this is just a way of pushing the idea of local color. A lizard just got under your head. <laughs> I haven't seen lizards since I lived in Florida. Uh, new to sketchy and cross hatching. Mm, this is a good thing, Aaron. Um, so this idea that what you're trying to do there, trying to trying it over digital watercolor to add contrast and value in key areas, um, it's coming out pretty cool. That's exactly what the next lesson is that gets released today. It's it's totally agree with you. It is it's a really cool effect. It can help you add just in, interesting details or maybe they didn't exist before or you couldn't do with with watercolor alone. And it's just a really nice contrast of mediums. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're going to be exploring that in this next lesson that gets released today. So anyway, that's, we'll say that that's the thing. So now let's go in and start trying to push some of these darks in the eyes and such. So usually what I'll do is I'll just kind of find some of the darkest areas and I'm going to go ahead and make her eyes actually have some pigment because they're not white. And we'll go ahead and go in with her eyes. And I've kind of kept them, again, a different color or kind of white because I wanted to make sure that they had their own distinct local color so that they look like they're very much a different color from the skin. I don't know if I planned that or not. I'm just going to pretend that I planned it so you think that I, I think about this stuff. Sometimes I don't think about this stuff and maybe... Maybe it. Uh, maybe it's just intuition based on how many times I've done these kind of portraits. Okay. All right. So we got the eyes. So now I'm going to go ahead and just kind of do the same kinds of lines that I was doing before. Um, but maybe I will, so if these lines are kind of swooping across this way, what I'll probably do is just to add some visual interest, I'll probably actually swoop them in the other way. Because by doing that, we're getting a nice cross contour, and we can see the distinction between the two. Um, just to add a little bit more visual interest. And this is where I start to press a lot harder because I really want this I want this color to stand out a lot more. And I am definitely emphasizing areas that maybe aren't as dark as they as I'm making them out to be. And then I'll go in and kind of fill in areas that need a little bit more love with the original color. So this is the dance. This is the I start putting in value. I start seeing that um, different areas could benefit from more darkening around it. That way I can go in with this additional color. And it's like, I see some over here. I see some in the nose. So I'll, I'll look for the areas that are just really dark first, just to give myself something to latch on to. Except, um, Still using the green from the glasses? Yep, still using that green from the glasses. Okay, so we've got this area right here. I'm going to go ahead and continue some of these lines. Not going super hard here. I don't want to go too dark too quickly in this area. Just want to kind of emphasize that area a little bit more. And then we've got a little bit here that I could have on in with. And I'm going to go through the nose a little bit because we do have a lot of fun stuff happening in the nose. So this is one area that I didn't off the bat uh, create a lot of lines for. And now I'm going to go back in and really kind of push some of these lines um, so that I've got a good foundation to work with. Because I'm about to go in over the top with the green. So I'm just making sure that 
the areas that need to be dark are dark and then um, that we've got value on everything because none of this stuff is white. So I'm just going to continue to look for these different shapes, cross over in some areas. Look down that bridge of the nose. The bridge of the nose is really interesting because I think like the length of it makes you want to draw lines that go straight down it, which is not bad, but I think it's really important to also have lines that go across it. Otherwise, it just doesn't look like it's got much dimension. So we've got a lot of value now in the nose. I'm going to come back in and just do some, again, cross contours just to really emphasize the roundness of the bottle of the nose. And then go back in with the green. It's really important at this particular moment that you're really confident with your strokes. With some of these features, it's just super important to, um, to really be clear in your statement. And the only way to be confident in your strokes is just really to practice. So don't expect to get this first try by any means. And even though this is, looks like a sharp-ish colored pencil, it is not sharp. It is already dull. So even just like this little bit. Uh, I get so scared when I'm sharpening <laughs> these pencils. They're pretty old and they um, break really easily. I'm going to come back up to the brow here. Trying to get this underside where the shadow is. And because I'm kind of going in the same direction, I'm just going to go ahead and get a little bit more value in uh, with that original process red. And then we're going to go back in over the top of this hair. Again, following the, the grain of the hair on the eyebrow, I would call it, I guess. Just gonna reinforce some of these lines. Oh, my nose is so itchy. Okay. I come in here and do some of this stuff. Get the, the plastic piece where it sits on her nose. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of unify this nose by adding an actual contour just to push it off the rest of the face a little bit more. And um, we'll go in up here again since we got some nice shadow happening. So, I mean, as you can see, it's, it's all about laying down that initial pass with um, your lighter color and then kind of coming back through with a darker one and then kind of going back to the lighter one to fill in areas as needed. And you can do this with a lot of different colors. I think if you saw the lesson um, from the class itself, you know, I used a lot of different colors in that one. Um, but I think uh, somebody posted, can't remember who, they did a different, they did a male model um, and they were like, they use a lot of different colors and they were worried they use like some blues and greens and um, reds also like just lots of different colors and they were like oh, i don't really like this because it looks like a person got beat up maybe or um they just look bruised and the thing is like our skin has all those different colors in them and so in my opinion, it's actually when you kind of introduce all of those different colors that you, you get something that feels more natural. Because as you like move down the face, it's usually something, it, it kind of goes from um, neutral to really warm colors here because we have a lot of 
um, blood in our cheeks and such. And then as we move down to the chin, especially if you're a guy, you're going to get a little bit of the five o'clock shadow. And so you get into like a bluer uh, kind of color as you move down. So we end up seeing a lot of uh, the range of the color in faces. So don't be afraid to use a lot of different colors if you're looking for something a little bit more naturalistic. Just kind of letting my lines be a little bit more free right now. Just kind of, I'm kind of liking the sketchiness of the glasses. Yes, so I would say that the pressure of the pencil as you're kind of moving through is, it's the, like I said before, it's the thing that requires the most practice and it is one of the most important aspects, I think, of this technique. Just knowing when to keep, keep the line um, kind of consistent in terms of its, its pressure and then knowing when to kind of go lighter and knowing when to combine those two things to get a really nice um, effect. Okay, I'm getting close to the end of my stream. I'm not quite there yet, so don't worry. Um, I, I want to say before we, before we part uh, that there is a, um, a coupon for uh, Sketchy Art School where you're, if you buy one of my classes and then use the coupon Heads Up Sketchy, Heads Up Sketchy, uh, you'll get forty percent off another class. So it's a great time to buy a couple of classes. You know, a lot of us are still shelter in place or in quarantine, so it's fun to have something to do. I'd recommend getting the um, Inktober class, maybe. Uh, I think that that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm probably going to do it. So you're going to see me not doing colored pencil, but actually doing ink, which is a lot of fun and it's really difficult and I love it. Um, does anybody have any like last minute questions that they want to ask? I'm happy to try to answer. I don't know if you've noticed this, but I do a lot of this before I start to kind of make my mark. I kind of go like this. I started noticing it when I was watching my videos that I recorded. And what I'm doing is I'm rehearsing. I'm trying to get a sense of like what direction the line is going to go. So I just imagine where I'm going to put the line. And I'm literally rehearsing the stroke I'm about to make. And I'm just kind of seeing it in my mind's eye, something I still do all the time. Yeah, you could use it to buy both of my classes if you wanted to. You don't have to. I would appreciate it, <laughs> um, obviously. But like I said, there, there's some really good other good classes happening uh, on Sketchy Art School. A lot of good stuff over there. I just want to say that I can't, like, such a wide variety of of classes. Anyway, I hope, I hope this was fun. I'm sharpening your pencil every 60 seconds. You think you need harder pencils? <laughs> I'm sharpening my, I think you do need harder pencils, but um, I'll, I'll, I'm sharpening my pencils. I don't know, I didn't sharpen a whole lot, but um, I haven't been using a lot of pressure right now. As I, if I were to keep layering, keep layering, keep laying, layering, I'd just be sharpening uh, a lot. So that is just one thing that uh, you need to do to keep to keep your lines fine. Um, so that's an unfortunate side effect of this technique with colored pencil. 
and why my pencils are really short now. Anywho, so yeah, sharpen a lot. It sucks, but that's it. Will I end up doing scarf poly? No, unfortunately I won't because I'm just right at the end of the stream here. Um, I'm trying to think, do I do cloth in anything right now? Uh, no, but the thing about when I, when I would do the, the scarf, um, what I would do is uh, I would treat it very similarly to the face, but it's got a much more uniform kind of curvature because it's, it's not super bulbous or anything like that. So I would just kind of probably hatch in a, a couple of different directions, um, almost treating it like I would the glasses where I'm thinking about it as just a more simplified set of planes. Wendy's using your kid stash of colored Crayola colored pencils. Hey, that works. Danielle used ballpoint pen. I love using ballpoint pen with this technique, to be totally honest. Um, lashes. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. All I would do is literally use the same thing, the same technique. Just don't do them uniformly. That would be my recommendation. Kind of chunk them up a little bit. Some longer, some not. It ends up looking a lot more natural. All right, that's it for me. Thanks, everybody. Um, next week, same time, same place. Next week will be ink and watercolor. So look for my new lesson to come out today if you're in the class. And that's it. So thanks for, thanks for showing up today. Hopefully this was fun to watch, and hopefully I'm looking forward to seeing if you guys drew along what yours looks like. But in the meantime, I am done for the day. So we'll see you next week. Thank you.